Hello and welcome to a video about how to record better audio with me, Kai W, the guy who records the best audio on YouTube. Obviously. No, but one thing I have to say is that this video is sponsored by Dating Mics, hence why there's one here and one here conveniently placed so you can see the brand name crystal clear. But I'm not just placing them here and using them because they're paying me to do this video. I do actually like them since I last tested them. I think they've got a nice, crisp, crystal clear sound. But it's got to be said that I'm no audio geek, I'm no professional sound recorders, they're YouTubers that record far far better sound than I do, but I've been doing this for 10 years so I've learned some stuff that hopefully I can pass on down to you people, even if it's wrong. Now this first one is going to sound stupid, but if you don't like it, get your own channel, yeah? Oh No, I mean we can talk about which fancy mic we can get all day long, but first of all you have to have decent headphones. These ones were bought for me by my sister one Christmas, I'm just showing her that I'm still using them. I've got lots of headphones, but um, yes to my lovely sister, I'm still using these of course. Nothing else, just these ones. Testing, 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 testies, 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 one, two, three. It doesn't matter if you're vlogging or you're filming somebody else, at the minimum you should at least check the audio through headphones before you hit record. This is one of the most painful lessons that I've learned since I started filming my own videos. When video fucks up, you can see it immediately. When audio fucks up, you only find out once you play back the video, which is usually when you get back home. Mostly the messed up audio has been mainly to do with lav mics, run out of batteries, interference, but you know, sometimes the benefits of lav mic outweighs the fuck up ability, like being able to do shots like this. If there's one thing you have to get right first, it's not exposure because you can just switch it to auto and get pretty decent exposure. Still, you can have those same problems with on-camera shotgun mics too. I'm not saying that you should always have your headphones on when you're vlogging because that would look a little bit silly, but do check as much as you can. There might be interference from your mobile phone. The battery might run out. Or you might just change environment and you want to check out what that sounds like. They say that sound is 50% of film. If you have no audio or your audio is fucked up, then you've only got 50% of a film, or a silent film. All right, next point, I can get rid of these now. Woo! Sorry, sister. Levels, levels, levels. People aim for different levels. What did Locke aim for? I can't actually remember because I didn't pay too much attention to what he was doing because I was too busy concentrating on being Kai. The level that I aim for is minus 12. Now that sounds kind of low, but you need to allow some room to get excited, to get happy, to get a bit emotional because when you do get a bit excited, if you laugh, if you cry, if you whatever, you suddenly get louder. Ha! 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 Pow! Poo poo! Pow pow pow! Pew! 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 Hee hee! Shamo motherfucker! Hee hee! So when you allow that room, even when you're getting excited, your audios aren't peaking. You don't want it to peak because once it's done that, you can't pull it back. Yeah. Damn it! Oh, here it is. Vini's well. You were going for that one specifically. Yeah, because you specific. fingered all the other ones. I just put the. I don't want plate. anything. I don't want to have anything in my mouth that you've fingered before. That's a, that's a good rule to have. And if you don't know what I mean by that, just think of a really overexposed shot and try pulling back the details in those highlights. Same thing with audio. And if you don't know what I mean by that, just think of a really overexposed shot and try pulling back the details in those highlights. Same thing with audio. Now when people first get started in a video making game, the first mic that people usually go for is one of these, a shotgun mic, and that is mostly a good idea. Now when we first started doing videos with Digital Rev TV, me and Locke used a lav mic because my idea was to walk and talk and faff about on the go DRTV actually gave us a shotgun mic to use on our shoots, but we never used it on our shoots. I took it home and used it as my VO mic, and I used it as my VO mic for the first like three, four years. But anyway, sometimes I still use a shotgun mic to record VO when I'm on the road, and I don't want to be lugging around a dynamic mic with its preamp, but I'll get to that in a minute. The point is, shotgun mics are incredibly versatile. There are some problems that can be encountered, but there's some ways you can fix that, and here's how.
I mean, it's gonna sound so simple, right? Just get closer to the mic. But whether you're in a noisy environment outdoors or in an echoey room indoors, if you get closer to the mic, that's gonna overbear the echoey noise than if you're standing back here, just a few centimeters away, you're gonna hear more room noise. It really is that simple, it's about being the most prominent sound. There might be a little annoying sounds over there, little echoes, a fan from the Atomos over there going crazy. Which is why the sound coming out of your mouth is going right down the throat of that mic, overbearing everything else. You're gonna hear those little annoying sounds less, right? Which is why this is quite useful. And this is gonna sound like a plug, but this movable mount on the Dayty mic, oops, just take it off. Yes, that's how movable it is. Moving it a bit forwards, because the mic capsule on shotgun mics is right here at the back of the interference tube. So the closer you get it to your face, to your mouth, the better it's gonna sound. It does sound nicer here. I was practically wearing it as a goatee beard. Let's get in the, let's get in the shade. Cover, not shade. And also this, this is seriously cool. But the closer to the mic you get, the more careful you have to be about plosives. Yes, yes, it's like it's like a Kindle. Kindle on, on your camera, you can read. It's a very boring book. All right, this is probably not the ideal placement for a mic, but there you go. Expert advice right here on the channel. But you know, this is middle of the room. This is not bad. If I put this mic right up against the wall, it's not gonna sound great. I mean, this is probably not an ideal place to be placing a camera anyway, especially from the back. It probably looks like I'm pissing up against my own wall, which is probably not gonna please the missus, but you know, I can kind of understand because this is the dining table right here and you don't really want to be smelling urine when you're eating your Cheerios in the morning, do you? But if you just listen to what you're saying for a moment, you'll notice that the sound coming out of your mouth is just being bounced back off these walls and that is gonna sound crap going into the mic. But there's nothing wrong with a bit of sound reflection. That's normal, that's natural. And that's why I like condenser mics because they're more open sounding than dynamic mics. Now for my VO stuff, I use a dynamic mic because that is an untreated room and that is a very echoey room. Dynamic mics pick up sound from very close, reject sound from further away. So that means I can get a studio-like sound without having a studio. Condensers pick up a lot of sound from further away. From over there, you can, you can be standing you can be over in the corner here, yeah? And it'll be still picking up. So you, so you can't get away with saying naughty words like, oh, titties, because it's still gonna pick it up. Yeah, so shotgun mic, it'll pick up sound from a straightish kind of line, but give it any chance to pick up stray sound deflected off any hard surfaces, and it will do that. Boom. All right, now that's pointed straight at my mouth. Hopefully that should sound better because this vague kind of direction is all bone and flesh and that should be blocking off any kind of unwanted echoes deflected off the walls and surfaces all around. Ideally, it would be up here pointing right into my chin slash chest. Now for this one, I'm not showing that you should put your car in this kind of position. It's just gonna look like a booby shot and I don't have too much cleavage here to show off. But this is gonna be good for sound because it's pointed straight down at my chin, down into my chest, and that is a nice surface to insulate block off sound. So hopefully the words that are coming out from my mouth sound nice and bassy and crispy. Crispy. You could use a lab mic instead, they pick up sound mostly in close proximity so it won't pick up too many echoes, but perhaps not as open or rich sounding. But if you delve deep enough into those audio geek forums, you'll find out that shotgun mics are not really suitable interior dialogue mics. It has something to do with the sound reflections entering the interference tube and muddying your sound. And a lot of people get obsessed with, oh, the Sennheiser MKH416 is the industry standard. It's like the Hollywood mic. And then we'll use it to record sound for the interior dialogue. No, you should be using a hypercardioid mic. No. But if you're just starting out, don't concern yourself too much with talk of MKH416s and hyperthyroids. Just concentrate on doing this, treating an echoey room. If you're starting out, learn how to get the best sound, not by buying fancy gear. Know how best to position the mic. Understand any potential problems that might affect the sound and deal with them. Now this is a spare room in my pump. Let me show you. Eh, look at this. 
There's nothing here. Bare bones, there's lots of bare walls, just bare reflecting the sound of my voice back into me back into the mic. Now I've been thinking about using this room to record stuff in because when the kids are at home, this is probably the quietest room in the house. Apart from the bathroom, but that's probably even worse for sound recording. I mean, I could line the walls with something, but do I really want to turn this room into just my studio space? It would be a bit selfish, which is why I've just put a chair there. Just nappies. Pillows and old clothes. You don't want to see that. My, my stained underwear. There's a top tip right there. Stained old underwear. Good for sound insulation. But I've used shotgun mics for VOs when I'm in hotel rooms. It's all about sitting in the right place, having the mic close enough and surrounding yourself with enough soft furnishings. I bet this sounds good. This is probably gonna this this is probably gonna really good. It's like I'm a portable studio right here. It's my portable VO booth now. This must sound luscious. Anyway, I hope this video has been useful. As I've mentioned before, there will be more videos about photography coming up in the pipeline, less videos about video making. But anyway, still. I'm going to give away one of these mics, a brand new one of course, I'm not too sure how many of you my lovely bokeh loving fam out there into video making so I'm just giving away one. All you need to do is tweet me with a hashtag DateyKai and just send me an amusing tweet about why you need a shotgun mic. Thanks for watching, see you again, bye bye. <laughs> do you like my hairstyle? <laughs>